Hey folks, I am back with a quick filament review today. I'm going to be looking at a roll of flexible TPU and a roll of uh, opaque ABS from Foxsmart. Um, this was sent over by them uh, just to get some uh, feedback and evaluate it. Uh, we'll take a look at the ABS here first and right off the bat um, you might notice this is one of the kind of non-standard spools. Um, it's a little bit wider, a little bit smaller diameter. It's got that small inner diameter. I'm not a big fan of that. None of my 10 printers stock would support this roll. And the printers that I tested it on had uh, custom spool holders in order to support it. So wasn't uh, thrilled about that, but that's not really so much a filament issue as it is um, a spool holder issue. So I printed on two printers for the ABS. Uh, the Shark, the Ring Gyro, and the Calibration Cube were printed on a Monoprice Select Mini and uh, did a great job. Um, I used print settings of 235 Celsius for the hot end, 80 Celsius for the bed, and I printed with glue stick on a Captain, a thick Captain film bed. Um, no brim, uh, just printed printed uh, almost like you would PLA, no warping whatsoever on any of the parts, including the tapered part of the, far of the shark fins. Um, the bridging on the shark was perfect, and the shark uh, spring action um, is without any friction, so that was great. Um, the surface finish is really nice. Uh, it's kind of a matte, as you would expect from ABS. Um, really consistent filament diameter. Um, I measured six feet of filament and uh, in six places the average is 1.72 millimeters and it didn't deviate more than 0.02 millimeters so um, this will feed very nicely um, this ship was printed on a Robox CEL so this is kind of the other end of the spectrum this is printed on a $200 printer this is printed on a $1200 printer and it performed equally as well as you would expect. Um, both of these, or all four of these parts were printed at 200 micron layer height and you can see that the detail that the Robox pulled off is astonishing. Uh, it was able to print these half millimeter pipes on the side of the ship with no stringing, perfectly rendered. So very impressive detail from this ABS. Um, no jams. I was a little nervous about the spool itself because the winding appeared a bit haphazard. Um, that said, no jams, no kinks from the spool. So even though it looks a little bit, a little bit random on the spool wind, um, there was no point in time where it actually kinked or knotted up. So can't really complain aside from the fact that it looks a little bit off. So I would um, I would say this is very, very good filament, especially for the price. Um, I think at the normal price is 22 bucks a kilogram, although I think right now they might have a sale for around 14 or 15 a kilogram, which would actually make it an exceptional deal given the quality. Absolutely um, above the average for its price and something that I would use for everyday prints without, without question. So um, I really liked it. Um, the second the second spool they sent me is actually some TPU, um, some flexible TPU, and I did some of the same prints, a few different prints. One of the fun things about TPU is that depending on your shell thickness and your infill, you can get anything from a pretty dense, hard cube. This right here, you'd almost wouldn't even be able to tell it's, it's uh, flexible, all the way up to something like this octopus, which is completely flexible. You can just squish it and it rebounds. A um, couple of interesting parts. Here's a uh, RC truck wheel, um, specifically designed to be printed in flexible filament, and it's got a thick, um, hard hub that's printed at high percentage of infill, and then the outer shell actually has a void designed inside so that the outer portion here is only a few perimeters thick. Um, here's a quadcopter part for mounting an FPV camera. Um, again, printed great, a little bit of support. One thing to know about TPU is that if you have a, an overhang like this and you, you, uh, you use support, you're going to get a rough surface. There's pretty much no way around that. The TPU, even with a cooling fan, 
is not going to form a crisp overhang. So you're going to have to do a little trimming or a little bit of sanding on those. But that's pretty much life for most TPUs. So that's not really anything out of the ordinary. And um, the, part, the parts turn out great. Super strong material. Um, obviously, the shark isn't going to spring because it's so flexible. Um, print quality was good. Um, these parts were all printed on a Flash Forge finder with uh, all stock with the exception of a stainless steel nozzle because I also print um, carbon fiber filament on that setup. So no issues. I actually printed faster than FoxSmart recommends. I printed at 40 millimeters a second uh, for pretty much everything you see here. Um, and oh, one exception. This was actually printed on an FT5 by Folger Tech. Um, with a Titan extruder. Um, and all of these printed at 40 millimeters a second on both printers. Had no issues with jamming, no issues with under extrusion, no slipping. It printed really, really well. Um, the color's great, a nice kind of jewel green. Um, again, consistent filament diameter. Obviously, with a flexible filament, looking for inconsistencies in the filament diameter is a little trickier because of the compliance, but um, there's no detectable issue whatsoever with uh, either being too thick or too thin. And um, again, for the price, which I believe the flexible is again around 20 to a kilogram, um, that's very competitive for a flexible filament. And I would use this, to be honest with you, any day over NinjaFlex, simply because the NinjaFlex doesn't really add a lot of value in terms of material properties and is significantly more expensive. So, um, yeah, I really got a kick out of the TPU. I don't use it all that often for um, prototyping. But if I needed some, um, I would absolutely use this. And I actually ended up printing quite a bit more with the TPU than I did with the ABS, uh, simply because it was so much fun and it was so easy to print with for being a flexible filament. So, all right, guys, that's about it. Um, I'll put links in the description for FoxSmart. Um, you can check out what they've got to offer and uh, see if any, uh, any of their filaments are something that that you need to, to restock on or check out for the first time. Uh, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Um, subscribe if you're not already, and we'll see you next time.